Thank you for joining us today. I am Rabbi Ellie Steinman, and I'm excited to welcome you to Behind the Shabbat Music, making melodious virtual music moments with the amazing music makers from Congregation Beth Israel, Cantor Star Trumpeter, and our music director, Mark Vogel. We've had so many questions of interest, people calling the Cantor, emailing the Cantor, talking with Mark about the way that we have been able to make beautiful music even on this online platform during this COVID-19 pandemic. And so the Cantor and Mark together asked me to come and to help us all understand how we're able to make this music on Zoom. So let's get right down to it. Cantor, are you and Mark singing and playing at the same time? How is this working? Thank you so much, first of all, Rabbi Steinman, for being with us today. We're so thrilled to have you. And of course, thanks, Mark, for being my partner throughout all of this. So the answer to your question, really, Rabbi, is unfortunately no. We cannot sing and play together at the same time. Try as we might, there's no online program that allows people to make music together. There's not even a program that allows people to talk at the same time. And this includes Zoom, which is the platform that we are using and so many of us are using during this pandemic. In fact, Mark, do you wanna experiment with what it would be like if you played at, and I sang at the same time? <laughs> My friends, my friends, my friends, my friends, you both sound beautiful, but that sounded terrible. I could only hear canter sometimes and only hear bark sometimes and you were a little bit off. The timing wasn't right. No good. Well, we appreciate your honesty, Rabbi Simon, and you know, that's what we were afraid of. So Zoom and other online programs, they only accept one audio source at a time. So what we're ultimately doing is we're tricking Zoom. And we do this by taking multiple audio inputs and mixing them together to create one input. We then take that one audio input and we send that signal to Zoom. So everything you're hearing from the piano to the singing, guitar, everything, it's going through a special mixer, as you see here, and then it sounds like we're singing and playing together at the same time. Now, I just have to say that the mixer and all of the fancy audio equipment that's here um, in my apartment, it actually belongs to our production manager and sound engineer, Lee Snyder. And Lee has not only entrusted me with his equipment, which sits on top of my air fryer, by the way, in my kitchen. Uh, but he's also taught me more than I ever thought I would ever need to know about the complex technology behind creating beautiful sound. 
Thank you, Cantor. So speaking of what we hear, Mark, it sounds like at times during our service and even when you were playing the Hine Matov even, there's a whole band playing like just there, like there is in the sanctuary behind the Cantor on a Friday Shabbat service. Obviously, I don't see a band in your place where you live, though I do see a lot of instruments that people have asked questions about. Um, how do you all make sound like that? Right. In real life, the cantor and I would normally be working together in the same space with a real piano and perhaps even other musicians like a drummer and a bass player. And we would be rehearsing together, making musical decisions in real time. Now that we are isolated from each other, it's all different. And the rehearsal process takes a lot more time. I have a digital piano here that is connected to my laptop through a special cable and interface. This allows me to record the pure piano sound directly into my audio editing program. Now, when I'm playing live on Friday, which I do for the prelude music and a musical meditation moment and for the postlude, my sound is also connected directly through this cable and interface so that we get the best quality piano sound. And on my laptop, I have an audio editing program that allows me to record several different layers of instruments on top of each other. Now, when I'm creating recorded tracks for the cantor to sing along with, I first record a basic piano only track. I send that to her. She gives feedback on the tempo and the roadmap of the music. When we're not rehearsing together, it's difficult for me to anticipate how much time she needs as a singer to take breaths. So the timing elements are particularly important. When we get that, that finalized piano track, that's when I can really start my editing work. I add in other instruments to create that band sound. David Craig is a renowned musician and bass player here in Houston. In normal times, you see him with us every Friday evening. But now what we do is I send him my piano, track, my piano tracks. He records his bass part only while listening to my piano track through headphones. That way, the only thing that gets recorded is his pure bass sound. And the piano track that he's listening to helps keep exact time with our music. He sends his bass recording back to me. I add it into the mix in my audio editing program. Next, we are ready to add some percussion. I have a djembe here at home that I play and record with, along with other accessory percussion instruments. Sometimes I even use everyday objects around the house if they sound good. I also have some computer generated percussion sounds built into my audio editing program. So now our song has several layers of instruments. It's just missing guitar and vocals. And that's where the cantor comes in. Cantor, I wonder if you would back us up a little and give us an audio demonstration of these different levels that our recordings go through. Absolutely. So interesting to hear you talk about all of that. And it's now my pleasure to play what Mark was just speaking about. So the first recording you're going to hear is an example of just the piano line of Shalom Rav. So this is the first layer that Mark records. <laughs> beautiful just the piano line but now I'm going to play the piano line with the bass line with David Craig's bass on top so here we go
can really hear the richness that gets added with that bass line. And now the third layer is, as Mark explained, percussion. And it's Mark doing all of that percussion that you're about to hear. So you'll hear the piano, the bass line, and percussion. Now we take all of those elements and add in my live voice and live guitar and we're going to give you a little example of that. Wow, that is so amazing to understand a little bit better all of the work that it takes to express musically these beautiful arrangements of our liturgy. Cantor, I know on Friday nights, I've heard you singing harmony with yourself. Is that done in the same way that Mark describes layering the instruments into the recording? Do you pre-record your own vocals? How is all that magic happening? So the answer is yes and the answer is no. Of course, two answers for you. So. After Mark sends me the instrumental recording, as he said, we want to get make sure that we get the tempos right and the rhythms right. So once I give the OK thumbs up, <laughs> I then add this recording to my iPad into a special Dropbox file. And in fact, all of the music for each service on Friday night is in its own special Dropbox file on my iPad. And after I do that, I open yet another piece of software on my computer. This one is called Audacity. And Audacity allows me to record just a vocal track. So what I'm doing is I'm listening to Mark's instrumental recording through my iPad. And at this time, I'm putting in my earbuds when I do that. And I'm then singing and recording the harmony line on the Audacity program. So after I record the line, I send the recording back to Mark and he only hears my voice. He doesn't hear all the backup instrumentation as well, just the vocal line. So I'm gonna play you a really brief example. This is just me singing harmony line for one of our favorite pieces on Friday night, Let There Be Love. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. So he takes that harmony line and as Mark likes to say, he pops it into his system and then he sends the final product back to me. So on Friday night, I'm singing the melody line over my pre-recorded harmony line and poof, instant duet with myself. So please allow me to share our completed version of Let There Be Love which includes all of the wonderful instrumentation as well as the added harmony line. Shelter. 
shelter from life's storm. So beautiful. I just love that arrangement of by Noah Aronson, Jody Suffern, and Dan Singer and Cantor. You always sound so beautiful. But the part that's missing, of course, is you all can't hear me singing along with you um, like I would be. I am at home when you when we're not together in our sanctuary, but I certainly am singing behind you as well. The sound is really amazing on all of these recordings, and it makes so much sense to me now that the vocal parts are coming from the same equipment and that it's part of what we would use in a in, in live performance, at least the, the layering, although we would hear it as one complete sound. Can I ask, what is the most complicated multi-track song that you and Cantor, or you and Mark, pardon me, have collaborated together to perform? Well, Rabbi, I know we've only known each other for about a year now, but I think you know that I love a challenge, especially when it comes to music. So when Mark and I first started to think about how to create meaningful and creative moments in Shabbat worship, we started to think about how we could sing multiple lines of a piece. And the first piece that came to our mind was the classic Ose Shalom by Debbie Friedman of Blessed Memory. And this is typically sung in a two-part round. And it was, as we started to work on the piece, I remembered that somewhere along my cantorial journeys, I had learned that Debbie actually wrote a third line to Ose Shalom that was never published. And so I reached out to a wonderful cantorial colleague and friend of mine in Arizona, Cantor Ross Woolman, who had written out the third line of this Ose Shalom, and he generously shared it with me I then shared it with Mark, and he and I just thought it was such a great line. So we needed to figure out how are we gonna put all of these lines together. So in the end, I recorded two separate vocal tracks, and then Mark added these tracks to his mix. And so when I sing it live, the biggest challenge I have is to remember to stay on my live part and not jump to another line that I've already previously recorded. 
So we actually debuted this three-part arrangement in a class that Mark and I started during the pandemic for Congregation Beth Israel called Behind the Jewish Music. And this particular class really focused on the history behind Ose Shalom, as well as various interpretations and musical arrange arrangements of the prayer. So it was exciting to share this version with the class and then sing it for Shabbat services. I wasn't able to be at the class and I'm intrigued. Can you possibly share it with us now? I would love to. Here we go. So beautiful. I understand that these parameters being 
socially distant and not able to make live music together are so hard and even working with Zoom presents its own challenges. Have you found ways to be able to make any live music together at all? Well, we've come close. So one of my favorite moments during any Friday night service is Mark's beautiful piano playing after silent prayer, which then leads into my singing of an Ose Shalom or a Yihi Yularatzon. And you could say in a way that this moment is kind of like a carefully choreographed dance. So when I'm in the sanctuary, I know almost exactly when to rise up from my chair and walk to the bima in order to be ready for my first note. So if we do it well, it's a seamless transition from Mark's solo piano playing to me singing along with him. And we've really tried to emulate this dance <laughs> through Zoom as well. So after a brief silent prayer, Mark plays live, and I know exactly when he plans to stop playing live. I then need to press the play button on my iPad at exactly the right time so that the listener will not be able to tell where the live piano playing ends and the recording starts. So Mark, I think we should show Rabbi Steinman and our viewers what we mean. Can you think of an example that would be excellent for this moment? Sure thing. Um, when I'm selecting a piece of music for moments like this, I'm, I'm usually selecting music that congregants can meditate and reflect with. And it also needs to lead directly into the song that you're about to sing. Sometimes I will just do a piano improvisation on the song that is coming up. Other times I'll create a mini medley where I'll choose a song that has a similar feel and is in the same key so that it can be a natural transition. And I'll plan it so that my live playing ends slightly unresolved so that when the cantor presses play on the recording track, it feels as if the first notes of that recording are a resolution or an extension of where I left off with my live piano playing. Cantor, shall we give a demonstration of this? Yes, let's go for it. and Mark, that was so very beautiful. I've learned so much from the two of you about how you're making all of this beautiful music together for our congregation to continue to elevate our prayer experiences. Even in this time when we're remaining physically distant, it is really true that we are spiritually together. And so much of that comes from the hard work that the two of you do for all of the music for Congregation Beth Israel. I'd like to ask one final question if I could. Talk, to, talk a little bit about the closing song and the postlude. Are those pre-recorded also? How are you doing that at the end of our service? I can answer that question. The closing song that the cantor sings is with a pre-recorded track, 
But then the postlude is a live reprise of that song. Cantor, shall we send them out with an example of this? Absolutely. So let's end today with one of our upbeat, fun closing songs for Shabbat, Hava Nashira by Josh Nelson. This is a great way to close our program today as well, because you'll hear everything that we've been talking about here today. Multiple voice tracks, multiple instrumentation by Mark, live guitar, and the best part of all, I think, Mark's live piano playing at the end. And before we close, I just, I want to thank Rabbi Steinman so much for, first of all, being our moderator today and helping us go behind the Shabbat music. But even more than that, I just want to thank you for your friendship and partnership all year. It's just so wonderful to have such a great colleague. And I know that we will be working together again, I'm sure, in the future. And you've just been amazing during this pandemic with Zoom. So thank you for helping us to create these beautiful services during this time. And of course, Mark, I want to thank you for your artistry, creativity, collaboration with me always, and especially during this time. And finally, thank you to the congregants and friends of Congregation Beth Israel. Thanks for tuning in and for supporting all of our programming, our Shabbat services, our music programs, and everything else that you do to support our wonderful congregation. And so may we all be inspired by our closing song here today, Hava Nashira, which urges us to sing a song of praise, hallelujah. Cheers.